Welcome, everybody. My name is Eric Solberg, and I'm with Janice Thornton. And just to introduce myself, I'm a golf teacher. Um, I teach at McCormick Ranch. I have a teaching bay inside. I also teach outside there, and I also teach online lessons throughout the world. Um, so we are here today to talk about women's golf um, and our experiences with it. So let you introduce yourself real quick, Janice. Uh, what do you do? So I'm Janice Thornton. I am an online personal trainer and I specialize in golf fitness. Uh, everything I do is online. And so therefore I provide lots of workouts that you can do either at home or at the gym. And the best part is it's when it's convenient for you. And I help you stay very accountable with your exercise routine. And like I said, I, lo I love to play golf. So I love to create workouts that are gonna help your golf game. So you can get strong and go long. So yeah. Eric, let's, let's talk That's about women's golf key. today. Yeah, no, I think that what you said is key. So yeah, so um, I, I do run a women's golf league at McCormick Ranch. I did it because I've had a passion for getting women into golf since I've been a young kid. And why did I want to? Because I, you know, it's funny what some people say, but I did it because I've always felt they've been got the short end of the stick. So even from a young age, I can remember stories of, you know, I'd be at the clubhouse and I'd hear somebody call in and say, hey, is it Women's Day? And I remember asking my dad, like, why are people asking that? It's like, because the guys don't want to go after the women because they're slow or something. And I like, so from the very beginning age, I'm like, is that right? Like, is this really true? So, and I found out, you know, I, I don't, I found out it's not true. <laughs> what, what everybody <laughs> believes, there's these stories. And I found out men are more, I think of the problem, but you know, so guys will give me a trouble, you know, you're, are you a feminist or something? I go, no, I would probably, I would do this for men if they were treated some of the same way as I see women. So anyways, back to the league, I started because I, you know, I would see women on the golf course scared as can be. They weren't enjoying themselves. Are they keeping up the next? They're just so frightened about what the people behind them are going to do. So I wanted to start this league for play, number one, for them to get out there and play, but also for education so they can understand what, how to play, how to keep up, um, you know, what's important. So, you know, I have a lot of beginners in the league and I teach them this. If it's a par five, take six or seven shots. I don't, I don't care if you miss two on the tee shot, you know, grab your ball and put it at 150 then. You hit try two from there and then putt two. You get six shots. You'll always keep up that way. And so therefore you'll always, if I went and played with somebody, I don't care, man or woman, that was a very beginner and they did that, I would be like, wow, that is incredible how they know how to do that and keep up. So I think it's a very simple process to that anybody can play golf with anybody knowing you can take one or two shots over par and you are always going to be okay. So therefore there's no reason to not go play golf. Um, and the other big thing I try to talk to them about, which is, I think, hard to get across is I say nobody cares about what you're doing on the golf course because they're so worried about their next shot. I mean, right. everybody thinks they're staring at you and watching your shot. They're looking at you maybe, but they're probably thinking about their shot next. Or if they hit one, they're thinking about their probably their next shot. So really people, they don't care what you do out there. They care that you maybe don't play slow and that yes. you keep up. But <laughs> beyond that, they really don't give a crap at what you're doing. And that's really hard, I think, for, and maybe you can talk about this. I talked to my wife about it, but I feel like for men, that's easier because I think, but women, I feel like um, I'll let you talk about it a little, maybe more. Um, I'll let you just, you, you can answer that one, why that may be a little different for men and women. I think men don't care enough and maybe they should care a little bit more about what people think that would maybe stop them from standing over the ball for a minute before they swing and playing a little slower, but you know, I, I don't know, what would your, why would, why, before I tell what women think, I'll just let you answer the question about why do you think women are more, you know, worried about what people are thinking uh, when they go out and play? Because um, I, I think, I feel like I see it all the time in their faces well, I, and everything. Well, I feel like, um, well, for one thing, realize when we're looking at you, we're actually trying to watch your ball. Not, we're not necessarily looking at you in this yeah. thing. We're Good trying point. to actually keep an eye on your ball for you to help yep. you. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> the other thing is when I play with beginners and I know that we're not there to keep us any kind of score, you're not posting for um, your handicap because you're probably not even good enough to try and have a handicap yet. Uh, I've had a lot of ladies that I play with who are very beginners. I have them tee up every single shot, even in the fairway. And that mm -hmm. way they can still try different clubs 
and I, you know, help teach them, hey, you know, tee it down lower if it's an iron or a hybrid and teach it up higher for the driver and get used to using your other clubs so that way they can learn to hit the ball up into the air. They're not worried about taking a big divot or necessarily missing the ball every time. Um, I think yeah. it just helps them get down the fairway better. But I love your idea too. You know, take six, seven shots total and pick yeah. just pick up. It's okay to pick up yeah. your ball. Because yeah. I feel like as a, a better golfer, I appreciate someone who's just like, oh, let me move up here and I'll drop and yeah. then again. We like that. Yeah, yeah like no, it's it's very, yeah, no, I totally agree. And I, I, it's the same thing I tell all the ways I play with is, or that I teach. When you're playing golf, you're playing golf. And I said, when you're practicing, you're practicing. So if you need to tee it up in the middle of the fairway, it doesn't matter, tee it up. You're, you're, you're out there to have fun. You know, when you're not playing competitive yet, you're trying to learn to play the game. Enjoy, have fun out there. It's not enjoyable to miss the ball if you're brand new and stand there and miss it eight times. Right. You know, so yeah. do whatever you have to do to ha make it more fun. And if that means teeing it up, that means teeing it up in the middle of the fair. It doesn't matter. You're you're out there to try to enjoy it as much as you can and, you know, just kind of get through it. So that's, I mean, I'm glad you said it because that's one thing I try to get um, uh, the, all the players to do so they can enjoy it more. Well, and I think too, if you say you hit it into a bunker and you really don't know how to hit it out of a bunker, yeah. then Hold walk up. in, grab your ball, rake the bunker and put it on grass. Yeah. Or if yeah. you, <laughs> it's like yeah. make every lie great. So yeah. you walk yeah. away happy at the end of the day because you're yeah. like, okay, I did okay today. I hit the ball, whatever. Yeah. yeah. You're and you know teaching beginners, um, and that's what I tell them. Your your number one goal is making contact. Mm -hmm. Until you can make contact with the ball every time, you know, then then that then you worry about how high it's going left, right, or whatever. But you got to get that number one goal down, and then you know you go from there. Um, no, I think that's that's great advice for getting through the round and having fun. And now, I mean, there shouldn't ever be anybody that says anything to you, and if they say anything, you tell them you're not keeping score, you're not turning a score in, you're not in a tournament. It doesn't mean anything. I'm out here to have fun. Thank you. And, you know, that, that will end it. I would like to address uh, one thing, too, that I hear from my women uh, students is that they, and I think I told you a little bit about this in the past, they talk a lot about getting advice all the time from people that uh, they may be on the range and people walk up to them. It's just they get nonstop obliterated with advice, um, making it kind of not fun because it's like, you do this, do this, do that. You did this, you did this, and that's difficult when you're hearing 52 things. So. Right. I feel like you have to focus on whatever you're trying to do. And like I tell all the women I teach is just, you know, just tell people you have a coach, thank you. And then it's over. So you don't have to hear so many different people say things to you that you can enjoy it. I mean, I, I would think it'd be pretty annoying. I don't know if you had to hear from people all the time what you're doing wrong in this difficult game, you know, when you're trying to have fun. Um, I, <clears throat> for myself, the only person who gets to uh, give me advice is my husband. And that's only because yeah. he knows what I did in a lesson. Um, Cause yeah. I always do a recap of my lesson. Um, yeah. If someone ever came up, be. if someone ever came up to me and said, Oh, Janice, why don't you do this or that? I would be like, thanks. I have a coach. Um, I appreciate go. your feedback. However, I'm just, gonna listen to thank my you. coach but thank you yeah and then that and person that... better be like a plus handicap if he's gonna give me advice <laughs> yeah I'll be like, well, let's go play buddy <laughs> you're right <laughs> i i don't yeah and i don't know why what the dynamics of that either are so let's get into a little bit like i know what i see in with women and uh, when i give them lessons to beginners i think there's a fundamental and i think this will lead into what you and i feel like how you can really help them because i feel like Women, I think, in golf just have a big disadvantage of strength, okay? Mm -hmm. Strength in hands and forearms. I mean, just in general. Are there certain women who have the, the good strength? Yes, there are. There's a lot that do. But in general, there's a more of a weakness than men have to create power and or to have hand strength and, you know, just arm strength to wield the club around. And, you know, the only way to get the ball up in the air is through, you know, having speed. Or I guess you can scoop it. It'll get in the air, but it won't go far. So eventually you have to learn to swing that club pretty fast. So 
unless you build up some strength in those hands and arms and you know where you really i mean i'll see it in the bunkers some women can't get out of the bunkers they just don't have the strength to swing fast enough or they'll try to like scoop it off the top because they can't get into the sand so right. I, I feel like just off the top, that's just a huge disadvantage women have. And it, I'd say overall in general, I mean, some women like you don't, I mean, you're already strong, but you worked to get there. <laughs> men yeah. are just, I mean, there's, there's how men are different and, you know, women, we, men have less brains, but we have more strength. <laughs> I mean, it's just, that's the opposite. We, women have more brains, patience, and a lot of other things than men, but we're gifted with more strength. But I think that's, you know, how, how do you see it with women as far as that, what I, you know, strength and stuff like that? Absolutely. Uh, you can definitely tell. And I tell people all the time, you can go to a lesson and if you can't keep your club in the position that you want that person to put their club in, you're not going to have an effective swing and get the distance, that extra distance that usually everyone is wanting. And it's not just upper body strength, it's your core strength, it's your legs, it's everything that you need to be working on to uh, improve your strength. You wanna work on balance, mobility, all of that will play into um, how effective your golf swing is gonna be. And absolutely, I can help with that with workouts that you can do at home or at the gym. And- How would you, how would you break that down for age? Like, like what you see, like, um... Like, yeah, what, what would you say by age and how that affects their training, what they need to do? And I just, I mean, in general, I mean, because I know I see 70 year olds that are some of them are strong women, but then I see some, you know, 30 year olds that can't barely hold the club up. So like just in general, what, what, how would you break it down by age, the differences that they need? And so, so I've been in the health and wellness industry for over 35 years. I've seen a lot of different age groups of people who've worked out from in their 20s to in their 80s. And I will tell you this, you are never too old to start any kind of strength training program. It will always benefit you 100% of the time when you start strength training. Now, as we get older, do we have to modify different things? Um, because you might have some kind of injury that's going on. Of course, that everything can be modified. Uh, yeah. Yeah for everything when it comes, especially when it comes to working out. Um, I can modify every single thing, but I will tell you, I have a client who's 72 years old and she mm -hmm. says, she's like, I could tell a difference within the first couple of weeks being consistent with lifting some weights on then what I could do out onto the golf course. She goes, I was like within a couple of weeks hitting the ball farther just because mm -hmm. she was actually stronger. Uh, and yeah. it does make a big difference. Huge. Huge. I mean, I feel like it's the, I think the one, one of the number one things that should be done, I feel like along with lessons, you know, doing both of them and gaining strength mm -hmm. so you can maximize what you do. I, Cause the like, biggest thing I'll see is when we'll come and they'll say, why is it that I hit my seven iron, eight iron, nine iron hybrid, all the same length? I'm like, well, <laughs> cause the ball go, doesn't get up high enough. Cause you don't have enough speed. Yeah. So eventually at some point when you don't have enough swing speed, your clubs are going to go the same distance. It, they mm -hmm. got to get up a high enough height to gain distance. So you got to get, need to gain speed um, big time. So it kind of, um, I like how you talk about how, you know, how she can, well, some of those people can see it that quick. Mm -hmm. um, how often do you suggest women would work out uh, to gain the speed they need and strength for golf? Typically, um, what would be a typical program, I guess? I have my clients do strength training workouts two to three times a week. And it's always based on what your schedule is as well, but at least two to three times a week. And then like I include a mobility class, a yoga class in the week just to give people variety. And then I have people do a hit workout too, just to get something totally different and yeah. to work your muscles in a completely different way. It's not high intense. It's high intense. It's not high impact. And, okay. uh, but that helps with building up some speed and power as well. And so they're fun. I mean, it's just fun stuff. And yeah, um, yeah it's, it's really what you can do for your week. Uh, everything right. is adjustable. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, a couple of things that I noticed too, that I see is there's a lot of old wives tales in golf. One of the biggest one I see with women that I want to address in this so you don't fall a trap for it is a lot of other women will tell each other to slow their swing down. 
So let's say they hit it really bad. I don't know. They miss it, do something like that. Then they get the advice from their friend to slow it down a little bit. You're swinging too fast. The problem is this. You're not swinging too fast unless you're falling over. You need to learn to swing faster. So the problem is, is the next shot, maybe you try to slow it down and you hit it better. So you think, oh, maybe it did work. But that doesn't necessarily mean it did work. Okay. <laughs> so remember, we're always trying to swing faster and faster within whatever our body can handle as long as it's efficient. Okay. So, and I, I just don't want anybody to fall prey for that piece of advice. If, if you're not falling over, not totally out of balance, you're okay with your swing speed. There's always a technical reason for whatever you did is what I want to explain. It's, it's usually not you swing too hard. So swing hard. Let's hit, start hitting the ball far. Do you think it could be that that's more their transition when they're transitioning to come forward, that yeah. that transition is fast and yeah, I don't, I don't see in women that women really do have a fast, you know, in either, you know, I don't think, uh, cause I, feel I, like I think they get improved their backswing. If you swing back faster, you swing through faster. And that's the, when we slow down our backswing, this thing slow it down. We can't regain that speed in the downswing. So in order to swing faster, you have to pick up your backswing and swing faster. I mean, sure, you like I, I get what you're saying. You want to have as smooth as transition as possible. That's it, what I think. You I don't want to just bad. rip it from the top. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, I mean, you do want to work on that. So I mean, if for some reason you're really, really jerky up there, but you don't want to slow down your backswing because that is going to affect your free swing big time. You can't make up that nobody can. Men can't. If we slow down the backswing enough, we cannot make up what we've lost in the um um, and the backswing. And I think it's just, it's, it, you know, if you watch the pros play women or men, it's hard to tell how hard they're swinging because they're moving so efficiently. Just like if you watch anybody running in the Olympics, you watch them like, oh, are they really going that fast? But they're in such great rhythm. Everything's moving perfectly together. You can't really tell like that they're going fast, but I promise you men and women, if you watch them closely, they're swinging off their shoes on the tours. There's they're coming out of their shoes. They're swinging so fast. Both of them. They all try to swing as hard as they can. So that should tell you right there that we should be trying to swing pretty close to as hard as we can because <laughs> they do it, the pros. So just another thought. But I feel like that's something you can help a lot with strength because you have to have the strength, like you said, that if you go to a lesson, can you hold the club in the proper places? Mm -hmm. You know, great swing faster. But yes, you have to have the strength, strength to be able to hold that club there and, you know, position it correctly. So Strength is just, I see such a key for women um, that's just vital uh, to be able to do that stuff, to be able to get in the right positions, to swing faster. Otherwise, it's not going to be good. Right. But, um, I mean, yeah. So big deal. So um, anything else you want to share about like what you see um, could help women, like as far as just feeling like you, you brought up a point before one time we talked about, and I hear this in my league all the time too, about I'll, women will tell me they're beginners. Can you please not put me with Janice? Janice is a really good golfer. And, you know, like what they don't know is, I'm, I'm speaking of this Janice right here, is that she would like to play with some beginners. Why? Because most people are want to help each other. I mean, like most people that way. I mean, yes, there are some that wouldn't probably, but I think most <laughs> golfers have a lot of good people in golf. That's one thing I love it. There's a lot of just good people. So, um, just from a women's perspective, will you just speak to that? Because I, I hear it all the time and I want to say, just play with them. They're a little better. They'll like it. And you can just kind of watch their routine. You know, like you won't leave the cart maybe 80 yards behind the green because you walked up there and you got to run back there. Just those, I mean, even not know, even ball better, but how do you get around a golf course without leaving yeah. the cart 80 yards behind the green because you didn't do things or you don't have your putter with you. You just got your, just those little things that you become good at you know, when you're a better player, because you've played, you understand how to be efficient. So. Well, it's funny you just say that because my husband and I were playing uh, in California and paired up with another couple and she was a beginner. And mm -hmm. I actually said, and people are like, oh my gosh, you're, you're playing with Janice. She's really good. And mm -hmm. I told her right away, I said, look, we're going to have a lot of fun today. And yep. I just know I want you to have a great experience today. So we talked about teeing it up. And then I would help her like, here's how you mark a ball. Like I knew she yep. was a beginner. I wanted to help her because mm -hmm. guess what? I was a beginner one time also. And mm -hmm. where I, I played tennis for 25 years. I thought golf would be the easiest thing to play. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it became the hardest thing to play. Yeah. 
And yeah. I remember when my husband finally made me keep score. My very, mm -hmm. so on the front nine, I shot a 70. Cause he's like, you're hitting every ball. We're counting every stroke. And I'm like, okay. So <laughs> I call my tennis partner who was a big golfer. I'm like, Scott, guess what? I broke, or I, I was like, I broke 70 or something like I shot 69. And he goes, you what? I go, he was I, shot, 18. I shot 70 <laughs> on nine holes. Oh. You, know, <laughs> you know, here he's just like, oh my God, okay. <laughs> so ladies just know, you know, we've all been there where you, you don't just pick up a golf club and then be able to hit the ball. We've all been there. And as a better golfer, do, am I going to play with a beginner every round I play? No, because that isn't going to be good for my game. However, if, when I do get paired up with them, I know, let me go into teacher mode then. Let me help you. Yeah. And like this lady, she wanted to leave the cart about 80 yards from the green and walk up to the green. I'm like, no, we need to take it up and over and park it by the green. And But she didn't know. And didn't know. like once you're told that you're like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, because then yeah. the, then people can understand what pace of play is and, yeah. you know, how to be efficient and grab clubs, two or three clubs yeah. for a choice on to chip with or whatever. Yeah. That yeah. way you have, you, you have to, everyone, we all have to learn at some point. Oh, well, even just, uh, my wife is relatively new to golf and, you know, she would go out with me and she would start with driving the cart and hit a few balls. So I would let her drive because I wanted her to learn it. And even just learning to drive around the car, like, where do you park? Like, do mm -hmm. I pull off the thing or do I, you know, so all those are all things that I understand why you're uncomfortable. So like, how, what would be the best way for, I guess you, if you're, I guess I'm trying to figure out how can you make that person new or that not, yeah, that's new comfortable. Like, how can you address them and say, something um or what do you think how how i mean it sounds like you did it really good with that person right away to really diffuse the situation yeah um, I, wanted, I wanted to make her feel very comfortable right away because uh you know and like if someone swings and misses i'm like oh great warm-up shot that's okay good practice, <laughs> just kind of, swing. Yeah. Good practice yeah. swing you it's know kind of Try funny again. so they probably laughed they probably would start off laughing which is good have yeah. to laugh <laughs> yeah which is funny yeah it's just like, it's all good. And I just, I don't know. I think women, if you're a beginner, should just, it's okay. Mo the majority of better golfers don't mind playing with you. Like I will tell ladies, hey, you watch contact and I'll watch your ball because they yeah. are lifting up so much and whatever they yeah. do. And that yeah. way, at least like, let me, I'm watching your ball. You don't have to watch it fly away. I'll watch it for you. Yeah. And then they'll hit the ball up in the air. And they're like, oh, that was so good. I got over the bunker or yeah. I was able to do whatever. And I'm like, see, it's all good. You just, just concentrate a little bit more <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. I, well, I'm, yeah, right. I mean, that's even a big thing, you know, for beginners their ball where where's their ball it's like even if they hit a good one it's like they may turn around or whatever and then they have no idea where their ball is i mean so it's even an art to learn like where did that ball go i'm like follow it till it stops and then you know find something around you know yeah. a tree or mark it with that but all those little things are things can learn so it sounds like if i'm catching this right is maybe if you are a better player and a beginner go talk to them before you tee off say hey you know like you did and talk to him, but let's have some fun and we're going to do this together. And I'm here to, I'm here to help you. And I want to have fun with you. And I'm glad we're playing together. Yeah. Cause it's um, just, I get it's intimidating. However, at the same time, I really haven't met any mean, really mean golfers, I guess. It's rare. And it? it's, it's very, uh, that's one thing I love about our sport because it's very rare. There's so many good people in golf. It's just amazing. It's, I feel like it's rare that I meet somebody who's not a really good person. I'm so thankful that I met. It's one of my favorite parts about what I do coaching because I meet just such great people. And um, so, yeah, I think it's very rare that you meet somebody, you know, that's not. So um, I guess, you know, what, you know, following this one part up is how, how can women, I, I know I've said before, how can you send a message to them to it really, to not worry about what's going on around you and have fun people aren't judging you like how can you maybe 
talk as a woman to them to I can, I think I can say it to them and I tell them that <laughs> but yeah. it, you know it's different me saying it like how do you think or how can we best address that situation let them really know that that that's the truth it really is I don't care you don't care if they met like you said when they miss it <laughs> who cares <laughs> you know yeah go try another one it, it doesn't matter like it, you know and it, it are we happy if they hit one 200 or something where well, yeah we're happy too but you know it's not like it's so how do you feel like we can as a community i guess of golfers help women out with that do you think like what is the best thing we can do do you think in in general i think just or is there a way i don't know if there's necessarily a way besides doing a video like this and having beginner golfers watch yeah. us to say look yeah i think so it's okay and um just have have confidence and have fun i know that you're going out there to play a fun round of golf. And the other thing is we all hit bad shots. Everybody. You know, there's not one golfer out there who doesn't hit a bad yeah. shot. And that's something to realize that nobody's perfect in this game yeah. uh, as much as we would all like to be. Um, however, yeah. we're not. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I always say it like this is we, we learn to miss it less, the better we get. Yes. Mm -hmm. because we're not nobody hits it rarely do you have a hole in one I mean no it, it's a game of misses it's you miss mm -hmm. your shot every single time it's just the better player maybe misses a shot from 10 feet a worse player misses it 30 feet away whatever it is so your goal right. is always trying to make that little gap small your miss smaller and smaller and smaller and that's really the difference is you learn to make your misses a little bit less worse but you're always missing it <laughs> yeah, I'll even say after I hit a ball, sometimes I'd be like, oh, that was a good miss. And yeah. because it's down the middle or whatever, just the trajectory yeah. wasn't what I wanted or. Right. Uh, yeah. And it's just like, ah, good miss. <laughs> next. Just good miss. Move on, move on to the next one, right? Just absolutely. Move on to the next one. Yeah. So I think, you know, best advice, do what you have to do to hit the ball as a beginner, whether it's teeing it up or whatever. Um, take number of shots you know that you have if it's par five i would say seven max i one to two over par is i think typical is what you can do but have fun because that way you get to move it around that way you get to do you know putting can be fun you know try different things you know like you said pull it out of the bunker but you know try a different shot move it to 100 yards pick it up if there's water there and you know you're gonna you can't clear it why are you gonna even try it go pick it up and put it on the other side yes. and have fun right yes. i mean like you know, golf is beautiful. The it, it's it can be quiet, serene, enjoy that stuff. And I think just don't don't let the game um, get to you when it's bad. Because like you said, even though you're not a beginner anymore, your struggles in a way are the same because you're trying to play really well and you're missing shots too. So it, we have all learned the better we get how to handle that stuff. It's just maybe your stuff doesn't look as good as Janice's, but or mine, but we're still missing it. And we're still going through that struggle. What we've learned to do is get over that shot really quick and move on to maybe the next one and, and know that there's, we have, we have bad days out there, yeah, horrible right. days uh, yes. when we play. Yeah. Yes. And so get over it and have fun. You have probably paid to play golf. So that doesn't try not to really hate something you, you know what <laughs> I mean? That you paid to do, which is, I think exactly. that's really weird thing about golf is people are cussing out there. They're going crazy while they're playing golf. I'm like, you just paid a lot of money to play. Yes. Try to enjoy it. <laughs> you know, there's not many things in life that we do that we pay for and we're like, oh, this is just awful, you know, but hey, I'm going to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> this is why I have a smiley face ball marker. And because it reminds me that I do not get paid to play this game. So I might as well have some fun while I'm out here. <laughs> might as well. And I, you know, meet, you know, if you're a beginner, I mean, I know a lot of people in my league are there too to meet people. Uh, and they go out to dinner sometime after there's one option. Um, but also maybe if that's not the case, you know, I, my thing is I find peace out there of how beautiful it is. And even if I'm oh, playing yeah. bad, I look for the peace. So, yeah, so that's, it, I can tell you, you find that too. And okay. how can people get a hold of you to take golf lessons? Yeah, I think the best way is just go to my website, ejsgolf.com. That's E J S golf.com and on there is going to have my email phone number you can book straight from there so you'll find all my info what our uh, social media is listed on there if you want to check that stuff out but i think that's the best first place to go to um to find out my info
Janice, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, same thing. Go to my website, jtfitnessandgolf.com. I have a form you can fill out to because I want to make sure that we are a great fit for each other. And then my email is going to be on there. Contact form is on there as well. Uh, but absolutely uh, check out jtfitnessandgolf.com. Well, Eric, this yeah. was a lot of fun doing this. It was. Video. I love talking about this stuff. This is great. Let's get more people involved. Let's get them stronger and have more women on the course. That's that's the goal, right? Absolutely. Well, everyone, awesome. have a great have a great day. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you, Janice. Thanks for your time too.